Those horrible shootings at the massage facilities in Atlanta. Terrible, terrible event. Eight people were killed, a number wounded. The media have been intent on telling this story, though, a certain way. There are a lot of intense discussions here about potential hate crimes. Police not ruling out a hate crime amid a rise in anti-Asian attacks. It should be called a hate crime. Authorities have not ruled out whether the crimes were racially motivated. There are plenty of people who believe that this was a hate crime. The idea that this was a hate crime. Officials are not calling this a hate crime, but not ruling it out. We know our media is race obsessed, um, but I think they should point this out. Not all of the victims were Asian. Um, we have three victims uh, here who were Caucasian and one Hispanic man who was shot and is alive, but the other two were dead, including Paul Andre Michaels. He was 54 years old. He was a handyman at one of the facilities. He was a security specialist as well. We're joined by his younger brother, John Michaels. John, first of all, we are very, very sorry for your loss, um, and thank you for joining us. How are you? How is your family? Uh, I'm hanging in there. I'm just, I'm, it's, it happened, but until we actually go to the funeral, I'm sort of like in denial. You know, I'm not trying to say, that. it's just dealing with it. And my, I'm just talking over my siblings and that I'm handling this for them. Uh, it's not been easy. So. And, what can you tell us about your brother? What was he like? I was a good guy, wonderful guy, would do anything for you. And uh, actually, he was, he owned Greater Atlanta Alarm. So he, he was actually the owner of the company, the home security company, or the security system company, and he was just servicing his client. That was his line of work. That was his business. So he was taking care of the customer. So we've heard a lot of stories about what happened and a lot of attention. And the narrative I heard, actually, to be honest, I was surprised that any non-Asians were, were affected by this. Uh, but there were two white victims and a Hispanic man was shot who survived. How have you felt about the media's portrayal of, of what happened in Atlanta this week? The gentleman who did it, he was addicted to pornography, which is a widespread epidemic in this country. It is actually, since the lockdown has actually gone off the chart, it is prevalent. And he even admitted that. Both myself and my brother, both being veterans, we serve this, this nation. This is not a hate crime. This is a disturbed young man with some psychological issues who needs some help. He needs, uh, I've been praying for him because being Catholic, I have to forgive him, but I've been praying for him. And the truth needs to come out. This was not a hate crime. And this country right now, with everything that's gone on, I, by watching your show, Greg, we don't need no more racial hate. We need to get together and heal as a nation and realize that this was a crime and a tragedy, but we need to frame it in the right context. Thank you for watching, by the way. Um, you know, I heard that police officer uh, tell the media, tell the world what the suspect told him. Uh, and the suspect told him this was not racially motivated. And you mentioned his, uh, his sexual issues. Um, we have that clip. I want to play it, and then we'll talk about the reaction to what this officer said. When I, when we, I spoke with investigators, they interviewed him this morning, and I, uh, they got that impression that, yes, he, he understood um, the gravity of it. And he was pretty much fed up at, and kind of at the end of his rope. And, um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. You know, he was just relaying what the suspect told him, and he was uh, attacked as being a racist and a sexist. This, again, is the, uh, is the suspect, Robert Aaron Long, uh, 21 years old, in custody. And uh, it's interesting, and I appreciate what you said a moment ago, that you're, you're even praying for your brother's killer. Um, that's a very big heart you have, a Christian heart. Um, how do you feel about... I guess I asked you this before, but I want to go into a bit more detail. The narrative that's being told completely ignores this young man's issues, um, who by all we assume he's a killer. The evidence seems to be overwhelming. Um, and 
just ignores the fact that your brother was one of those lost, and so was that young woman, and a young man uh, named Mr. Ortiz was was shot. It's. Do you feel ignored? Do you feel overlooked? In some respects, yes, but I wouldn't expect, as in the words of the great late Rush Limbaugh, which was it, my brother and I were both a fan of, this is, this is the drive by media creating a narrative that is not correct. I wish they would stop, think about what they're doing, and quit stroking racial division in this country. We don't need it. We need to come together as a nation of, of people from all different backgrounds. In, in our family, we have all different nationalities from Europe. You know, we are Americans first, the race part second. And that's one thing I do not like about this political correctness stuff. They were American Asians. They were, that's who they were. This man was a American citizen who permitted a crime and has guaranteed his rights under the Constitution, which we both fought for. What service were you in and what service was your brother in? I served in Fort Benning as a combat engineer from 1986 to 1988. My brother served as a 11 Bravo in the infantry from 1985 to 1989 in Erlang in West Germany and Fort Knox, Kentucky. By the way, Joe Biden and, and the vice president both went to Atlanta today. Part of their agenda was to meet with the families of uh, of those lost in these shootings were you contacted are, are are you going to that event no i live in nova michigan but i was not contacted by bozo biden or Kamala harris at all i know that's not their proper names but the president and vice president did not contact me and they really need to focus on the right issue not the race issue uh, George joe biden talks about unity and this is not, this is far from unity. You know, uh, you talked about false narratives earlier and you're a fan, you were a fan of Rush and me too. I've never seen anything like this where a false narrative takes place right before our eyes where they deny the truth and they come up with their own version. This happened on the CBS morning show uh, just, uh, I guess, two days ago. All right. They, they had just heard from the police officer down there who said that the shooter was motivated by a sex addiction and that this was not racially uh, motivated. Anyway, here's their conversation about what that officer said. The sex and racism seem, seems very intertwined here. And I, I don't think that we should miss that point. The, the, the police official who indicated that this guy had a bad day yes. and that he was targeting these places of business because of his sex addiction, that's racist, that's misogyny. When you use that language yeah. around Asian women to talk about Asian women, yes. that is misogyny. Sex and racism are intertwined here. And he can say, I'm not a sex addict, or I'm a sex addict, not a racist, but yes. it's a distinction that may not have a difference. They were so intent to make all of it racial. And, you know, your message is a powerful one, and it's so interesting that... You, go ahead. Uh, just someone who's had issues with pornography in the past, who actually overcame them through... Tilt up? Drawing closer to my faith, and with confession and the rosary, and faith in Christ actually freed myself from that. I understand where this man is coming from. The media needs to tell the truth, and it really angers me that I have a dead brother of a, in a crime, and they're talking about race. If it was me, I would. I, I am very angry at these morons in the media. Because, and you you just told us you had a you had an issue, and you overcame it with the help of God. And here it is, the issue is being presented and we have an opportunity to talk about it, possibly as a country, yet everybody's running, the media is running to their comfort zone, racial politics. And so is President Biden. And that is really unfortunate. I know funeral arrangements are still being made for your brother. There's a GoFundMe page. We'd like to call attention to it. The Atlanta spa shooting victim, Paul Michaels, uh, familiar with GoFund, GoFundMe, you can just put Paul Michaels in the search box, I believe, and you have a $10,000 goal and you're halfway there, and I know our viewers are going to want to assist. I certainly will uh, like to assist in 
John, we appreciate it so much. Thank you for your candor and sharing your memories about your brother and all of this. Um, best of luck and let's stay in touch, okay? Just one thing before we close, Greg. Sure. The porn issue, the porn issue is an epidemic in this country. If you look at the numbers, and especially during the lockdown and the pandemic, it is in a very, very intense epidemic. And it destroys the, the, the basic dignity of the human person. And that's the real issue that needs to be addressed, and it's not the race issue. Paul, I'm glad you brought it up. I actually talked about it on this show over the summer in the middle of the pandemic, and I don't know, for whatever reason, it wasn't, uh, didn't go over too well on the Internet, but I think it's an important issue to discuss. It is harming relationships. It's uh, harming children. It's harming adults, young and old. Um, and we're not having an honest and frank discussion about it, and I'm glad you're raising it. And um, I praise you for your boldness. And uh, thank you, sir. An honor to meet you. And I'm so sorry what happened to your brother. Thank you, Greg. And I appreciate your condolences. And thanks, thank you to the Newsmax family for supporting us. Thank you. Thank you. And let's, uh, let's keep in touch. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.